Threads of the War is a component of Strozer Limited, which is funded through Patreon support as well as sponsorship from Wise. I use Wise for my business account, for international money transfers, and for a debit card to make purchases for my business. I've also used it to transfer money from my U.S. dollar account to your account when we were purchasing our home in Ireland. You can use WISE for all of those same things. If you're considering using WISE for any kind of international banking or money transfer support, go to tinyurl.com forward slash threads WISE, T-H-R-E-A-D-S-W-I-S-E, and you will be supporting Threads of the War as well. Thank you very much. And may the lessons of history compel the world toward peace. May using WISE help you support threads of the war and help you save money on all of your international banking needs. Ripped from the tapestry of history, this is Threads of the War. Personal, truth-inspired flash fiction of the 20th century's war. I'm Jeremy Strozer. Finally. Yes, my fear! I shout just as the door to the Chancellery bunker glides open. In walks General Dietrich von Sauken, newly reinstated from being fired last month for insisting it is pointless to continue the war. How will the Fuhrer treat this Prussian aristocratic general? How will a general who was just fired and rehired handle meeting the Fuhrer again? General von Sauken slowly and casually walks into the room wearing his cavalry saber and monocle. He has his sword and monocle on, not to mention his sidearm. All are forbidden in the Fuhrer's presence. Seeing the Fuhrer, the general offers a soft, almost half-hearted military salute without removing his monocle. The Nazi salute has been compulsory for all officers since the assassination attempt last July. I eye Bormann. He looks back at me. What will the Fuhrer do to this general who is so blatantly disrespecting him? General Guderian, brief General von Sauken on conditions in East Prussia and the Danzig area, where he will take over 2nd Army Group, Hitler orders. Did the Fuhrer notice the general's contempt? The general is eyeing the Fuhrer with such loathing. I provide a short brief to the general, informing him of Russia's disposition in the area and the current strength of the Second Army. And, in Don Zagiri, you will have to accept the authority of Goletier Forster, the Fuhrer adds as an afterthought. Ah, the Fuhrer is making General von Sauken report to a local Nazi party official, rather than a military commander. That can't go well. No Prussian general would take orders from a party functionary. Borman gives me another insecure look. General von Sauken stiffens with a withering look aimed directly at the Fuhrer, who doesn't seem to notice as he looks down at the maps on the table. Leaning over the table, General von Sauken, who still has his monocle in his eye, slams the flat of his sword down in its solid wood surface of the table with the full force his powerful arms can deliver. The room falls silent. Surprised by such insubordination, the Fuhrer looks up directly into General von Sauken's eyes. I have no intention, Herr Hitler, of placing myself under the orders of a Galatier. General von Sauken declares with the utter contempt for a man he sees as some mere corporal rather than the esteemed leader of a now crumbling nation. A small bug walking across the carpeted floor would make an echoing boom across the whole of the room in such silence. General von Sauken just refused to take a direct order and belittled him by addressing him as Herr Hitler instead of Mein Führer. Bormann looks at me again, then looks toward General von Sauken. I look at both of them with an imploring visage. Please don't get the Fuhrer angry today. It seems Hitler is physically shrinking from the general's words. His face looks even more waxen, his body more bowed than ever. After a few tense moments, Hitler quietly mumbles, All right, Sauken, keep the command to yourself, while waving the general away. Making a half-hearted bow, without providing a Nazi salute, General von Sauken turns his back on Hitler and leaves the room. Someone stood up to Hitler in his presence. It can be done. Finally, it has been done. On March 12, 1945, Hitler was so blatantly talked back to by one of his generals, but this time the general was not fired. The conservative Prussian aristocrat General Dietrich von Sauken did not take orders from what he referred to as the brown mob of Nazis. When Hitler ordered him to defend Danzig, he was agreeable. But when Hitler told the general that he would take orders from the local Nazi party official, the general would not have it. Hitler relented and the general was able to command as he saw fit, leading to a strong defense by under-equipped and ill-trained men in the German Second Army. Hitler was feared by many, 
but yet he succumbed to the force of a clearly better man. Not intimidated by Hitler's ravings nor hypnotized by his charisma, General von Sauken replied as he saw fit. How many times in Hitler's rise to power could someone have stood up to him, preventing the horror he wrought on the world, if only they had as much nerve as this Prussian general? General von Sauken was the last German awarded the Diamonds of the Knight's Cross on May 8, 1945, for his masterful defense of Danzig. He was offered a flight out to safety in the West, but he refused, insisting instead to surrender with his army. After surrendering, von Sauken went into Soviet captivity. He refused to sign a false letter and was subsequently sentenced to 25 years of imprisonment and sent to a Siberian work camp. Here he was tortured and spent 12 months in solitary confinement. He returned to Germany in 1955 as a marked man and settled in Munich, where he took up amateur painting. He passed away in 1980. If you enjoy these threads of personal experience and more, please consider becoming a patron of this work at patreon.com forward slash threads of the war. You may find my books and other work at jeremystrozer.com or wherever books are sold. If you are interested in turning notes, memories, or memoirs of a relative into a living history through such work, please reach out to me at jeremy at jeremystrozer.com. May the lessons of history compel the world toward peace. Thank you.